Okay, we're going to take a look at what has absolutely dominated the latest news cycle, mostly, I think, because of the ticking clock aspect uh, of this sub. Um, but I want to just take a look today at the uh, the physical material properties of what happens when you get a sub and you take it down to some 5,000 meters, 5 kilometers down. And... The, the the reason this works is the inside of the sub isn't pressurized. So it's one atmosphere of gas. Uh, you know, same as what you're breathing now is what goes into the sub at the top. And when you get down to depth, it's um, a lot of atmospheres, about 500 atmospheres of pressure on the outside. And it's still one atmosphere on the inside of the sub and that's basically how people survive and the way it gets down is uh, it's got to be heavier than water to go down so uh, you, you stick some weights on it and when you want to when you get to the bottom and you want to come up again you basically cut the weights and you should float up to the surface so um, in order to describe what happens to this uh, if you get a pinhole in it at any point during any of this journey, um, I'm going to start off by explaining your, your lungs, right? People have lungs most of their life. They, they, they understand them. So this is going to be the volume of your lungs, uh, one atmosphere. And turns out that if you go down into water about 10 meters, that gives you about an extra atmosphere of pressure on the outside. So if this is your lungs, uh, when you breathe in, you close your mouth and you swim down 10 meters. By the time you get down to 10 meters, the volume in your lungs has roughly halved, but the pressure in your lungs has roughly doubled. So the pressure on the outside of your body is two atmospheres. The pressure of the gas on the inside of your body is also two atmospheres, uh, but yeah, the volume is halved. And likewise, if you were to go down to 100 meters, um, you've now got a pressure of about 10 atmospheres, and the volume in your lungs has gone down 90 odd percent. And the volume of your lungs is tiny, but it's got 10 atmospheres of pressure on it. And if you do this the other way around, it's the this is a classic way of divers to kill themselves: is if you fill your lungs with air at 10 atmospheres. So your lungs are completely full and you swim straight up to the surface. Basically, the uh, you, you explode. You don't explode. You, you get all sorts of soft, squidgy organ damage, which kills you. And whilst you can't actually do that with your lungs, it, but you can damage your body with your lungs. But um, uh, if you try and surface with 10 atmospheres of gas in your lungs... Uh, it just blows out your mouth. It'll also severely damage you. But um, yeah, the one that is a very nasty way to go is if you manage to swallow some air at 10 atmospheres um, because then you can't get it out of you as you surface. And so as you come to the surface, the volume of gas at 10 atmospheres increases by a factor of 10 at one atmosphere and that will quite happily rupture your internal organs. So, eh, eh, it's a pretty nasty way to go. Anyway, that's only if the gas is inside your body. Uh, what happens if we have our sub? Well, if our sub is down at only 10 meters and we put a little pinhole in the bottom, what will happen is the sub will fill up roughly 50% with water and the remaining gas will be two atmospheres of pressure. And if we're down at 100 meters, then it'll 90% fill up with water. This will be 10 atmospheres of air at the top here, and the rest will fill with water. So at this point, you can see that a pinhole of any description in a submarine like this is instantly fatal. And uh, even if the gas pressure doesn't kill you, and the gas pressure would kill you at this point, but uh, even if the gas pressure doesn't kill you, you've lost your buoyancy, right? You can never regain positive buoyancy if your submarine is full of water, 
Uh, so you sink to the bottom and, and that's it. Um, also, I should stress that this is roughly 10 atmospheres in your lungs is pretty much the upper limits of um, what the human body can deal with in terms of the viscosity of the gas, the solubility of the gas in the body, uh, heat transfer and all that sort of thing. These things start to run out at about 100 metres of depth and 10 atmospheres of pressure. You might go up to, uh, I think the deepest human dive is like 300 metres, but um, it, it doesn't matter. You run out very, very quickly of of life once you, you get up to very high pressures. And they lost, that's merely at 100 metres, uh, they lost con contact with this thing at about one kilometre, 1,000 metres. So uh, if they had any sort of pinhole, uh, it would just fill up and sink. And if it's a catastrophic failure, so it turns out they had a viewport on the front of their submarine, which was only rated down to like one and a half kilometres or something. Um, and yeah, there's speculation that... Uh, they, they they were running it past its safety limit. That's probably, uh, yeah, if I'm looking for a point of failure, that's probably not going to be it. In the, uh, you know, having a factor of two um, in the strength of these things is not crazy. Um, but for certain, it's sailing close to the wind. If I'm looking for a a point where this is going to fail. This this submarine goes up and down to these sort of absurd pressures. Um, every time you sort of squeeze the hull with this very high pressure uh, and then take it off again, it, it causes mechanical damage, mechanical aging. And you do enough of that, eventually you will just get a little crack in there. And that's basically curtains. Um, now... There has been sort of things where they say they've heard knocking, um, and yeah, it's just say I'm I'm skeptical of this too. So roughly ballpark figures there. Uh, if if they're on the sea floor, that's five kilometers down. So for people to hear the knocking, you have to hear them five kilometers away on the surface. Uh, this is maybe possible. Um, you know, uh, water is a fairly good conductor of, of sound. But, you know, um, so if they're on the sea floor, um, that means that they've uh, they, they, they've got pressure. Right? If, if they've got a leak of any sort whatsoever, everyone is, is dead. Um, and, but if they've not lost it, but they've still managed to sat on the sea floor somehow... Um, well, yeah, just just actually locating them is is virtually impossible. And also, if you just take a look at how uh, yeah big, assuming the sound can go like five kilometers or something, in the search area that they have to look at, um, in fact, this is this is way off. You know, a, a four kilometer box is basically a bullseye. That you know, if you really did hear these sounds, then. Um, yeah, you have to be very, very close to where they are. Um, yeah, so not sure where this is going to go, but uh, I just wanted to go over what um, yeah the, the the effects of pressure on on a submarine like this. Anyway, so uh, that's a quick summary of that, and let's keep our fingers crossed for them. Okay, ciao.